In this lesson, we're going to look at how to determine domain and range of relations. So there are two types of functions. Uh, the first type is called a discrete function. And a discrete function occurs when we just have select points. Um, so for example, there's a graph here where there are some points indicated. Um, there are no points in between. It's not a line or any particular um, equation. It's just ordered pairs or points. The other type of relation is called a continuous relation or a continuous function where the uh, points are joined together into a line. So we'll look at those next. So if you have just a discrete function where it's just points or ordered pairs, I could list these as ordered pairs. Um, so my domain will be all the x values for these sp uh, specific points. So I see a point at negative 5 when x is negative 5. I see a point when x is negative 1. I see a point when x is 1. I see a point at 2. There are two points at 4, but I only need to write 4 once. And there's a point when x is 5. So for example, this point here is has coordinates negative 5 and 4. So the x value is in the domain and the y value is in the range. So when I'm listing the range, I'm going to list the y values of these points. I can see a point at, I'll start at the bottom, so if I go up and down the y-axis starting at the very bottom, there's a point at negative 1. Um, there is a point at 1. So now I'm going up the y-axis. I see that there's a point, well, there's three points at 4, but I only need to write it once, and there's a point at 5. So if I were writing out these as ordered pairs, I have a point at negative 5, 4. I have a point at negative 1, negative 1. I have a point at 1, 4. I have a point at 2, 1. I have a point at 4, uh, negative 1, I have a point at 4, 4, and then I have a point at 5, 5. So the x coordinates of these points are going to be in my domain, and the y coordinates of these points are going to be in my range. And like I said, you don't need to write a number twice. If it appears twice, you only need to write it once. So if your um, relation is given as ordered pairs, or points, then the domain and range will be a list of numbers. So we'll just list the x values and the y values. A continuous function is a little more um, tricky because we can't list every single point. It's impossible to write down a list of every single point on a line because there are infinite number of points on the line. So these are continuous functions. Um, so we're going to show you set builder notation, which allows you to uh, list all the values that are possible in the domain and range. So you can think about it as saying all grade 11 students rather than just listing every single one because that would be too many. So we would just say all the grade 11 students. So in the first example, and if you see a graph like this, assume that it is continuous at each end. The arrows are not drawn in, but we're going to assume that it goes on forever as we go to positive and negative infinity. So in this line, set builder notation starts with the um, set of real numbers. So when we have a continuous function, we say x is an element of the set of real numbers. So what are real numbers? There's a set x an element of the set of real numbers. Real numbers are basically anything. So when you first start looking at number sets, you have the set of natural numbers, which we looked at in the last unit in discrete functions. So natural numbers are just all the whole numbers starting with one. Whole numbers is a set of natural numbers, but it also includes zero. Then you have integers, so integers includes negative numbers. 
0, and positive numbers. And then real numbers are basically anything that can be expressed as a whole number or a fraction or a decimal. So real numbers includes all of these values. So real numbers pretty much includes anything um, except for irrational numbers. So an irrational number is a number that does not end and does not repeat. So for example, pi. Pi is a non-terminating, non-repeating value. So that is an irrational number. So that is not included in the real numbers. So when we say x, e, r, we're saying x can be any number. And then if there is a restriction, we would state that at the end, but there are no restrictions. So we just say x is an element of the set of real numbers because we can use any value for x. It's continuous to the left and the right. And the same with the range. The range is a set of real numbers because it is continuous to the left and right and up and down. So x and y are both in the set of real numbers. If we have a parabola, again, x is an element of the set of real numbers. So your domain and range, if it's a line, will always start with x, e, r, y, e, r. So it will, it's indicating that we can use any number going to the right and to the left. The graph is continuous. It does not stop. So x has no restrictions. Now with a parabola, there's always going to be a restriction on the range because there's going to be a bottom or a top, right? It's either going to have a lowest point or a highest point. This one has a lowest point right here at the coordinates 2 and 2. So all my y values are above this bottom point or this vertex at 2. So I'm going to say y is any number but so this line is a restriction. So it's indicating that there is a restriction on these numbers. It's kind of like a but. I'm going to say y has to be greater than or equal to 2. So I'm going to allow any value for y, but all those values for y are going to be at least 2 or bigger, so greater than 2. In this graph. So you don't really need to, if it just says state the domain and range, you don't really need to know what the equation is. You just have the picture. So the domain, so if I go to, to the right, it is continuous. It is a line, so we'll say x is any real number. But when I go to the left, it stops right here. So this is at, um, let's see, or 5. So this point here is at 5. So x is to the right of 5. So we'd say x is greater than or equal to 5. So it's including 5 and anything bigger. The range is any real number because it is continuous as you go up and down. It's not going to stop. So there is any y value but x is restricted. In this example, so any circles and ellipses which is kind of a squished circle, are going to have left and right boundaries and vertical boundaries. So I'm going to say the domain is any real number because it is a continuous line, but it stops here at negative 3 and positive 3. So it's anything in between. Anything in between positive 3 and negative 3. So I could put x. I have a right boundary at 3. I have a left boundary at negative 3. So that's kind of a short way to write it. I'm going to say x to the right goes to 3, so it's less than or equal to 3. And to the left it goes to negative 3, so it's greater than negative 3, but less than 3. And any number in between. When I'm looking at the range, there is a top and there is a bottom. So the top of the graph is at 2 and the bottom's at negative 2 and then it's anything in between. So we would say the range is any y value but it has a maximum value at 2 and a minimum at negative 2 so it's anything in between. So it's any number less than 2 but bigger than negative 2. In this example 
the graph starts here and goes to the right, starts here and goes to the left. So the domain, so it is a line, so it's any real number, but we have to write these separately. We can't do it like we did with the ellipse because it's not in between, it's they're pointing away from each other. So this point here is one, so we'd say x is bigger than one, so greater than or equal to one, or less than or equal to negative one. So it's either this way or this way. It can't be both at the same time. So we're going to write them as two separate statements. And then the range is any real number because it can go up and down with no restriction. So if it is ordered pairs or points, you just list the x and y values. If it is a continuous line, you always start with x, e, r, y, e, r, and then state any restrictions after.